Luke, the 15th chapter. Let's start at verse 1. And it reads, the, Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, and I, I want to, don't want to read 4 through 7. Let's drop down to verse 8. Either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and diligently seek or seek diligently till she find it. Verse 9, and when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Today, I would like to take a few moments to talk to you from the subject, the value of lost things the value of lost things. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence that's so rich in this house. Lord, we have tasted and seen that you are good and we're here to say blessed is the name of our God. Blessed is the rock of our salvation, the one who saves. Hosanna, save us now. Hosanna, redeem us now. Hosanna, we call on your name. 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 And we ask for your divine power, your presence. As I decrease, Holy Spirit, you increase. Use us for your glory. And for that, Lord, we'll give you praise, glory, and honor. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, you may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. And um, I do honor God for this moment in time. Again, I honor uh, you, the Lord's people. I didn't say that before, but I honor uh, you, the Lord's people. I honor, honor, honor Bishop. Porter. <laughs> I honor my husband and my covering, Bishop Porter. Will you clap your hands? I know you've stood, so don't stand again. But just help me celebrate his gift, who he is, who God has gifted us with. Amen. In the presence of Bishop Porter. Amen. The man who prays for us and, and covers us and, and has done great things for this house. And we are grateful for what he's doing in this place. Amen. You know, God is doing something wonderful in you, <laughs> something awesome and uh, things that we cannot explain, but he's doing it in us. So we are grateful for that. We honor each of you in your respective places, and we are going right into the word. Amen. Amen. So Luke, the 15th chapter, and I like how this particular passage begins the very first verse, out the gate, we see that Jesus is a man of importance. He's a man that is not only important in his own right, his own authority, his own power, but his love for people draws people to him. It's one thing for you to be important, to be dignified, to have a certain place and stature in society. But it's another thing when that position, that place, that stature does nothing for the people that you are supposed to be serving. What I love about Jesus is that Jesus, he didn't go around announcing who he was or his worth. Jesus loved people where they were. He said in several places that my meat is to do the will of him who sent me. He understood from day one his purpose. 
He understood when he was 12 years old, when he was seemingly lost, his family thought he was left behind uh, um, unintentionally, but Jesus stayed behind on purpose because he was on assignment. God was defining and creating a name in the earth for him. And sometimes when God is defining your name and giving you a place in the earth, he will detain you in places that you don't necessarily want to be in. He'll make you hang out behind people that seem to be miles ahead of you. He will do that. Because he's creating a name and he's giving you a posture in the earth. He can't do that when you're with the crowd. He can't develop you when you're hanging around your best girlfriends. Sometimes the best development happens when you're all by yourself. You're down by that kitchen sink crying and talking to the Lord. And while you're sobbing and there's no Kleenex nearby, you can't even make it to the paper towel holder. God is transforming you from the inside out. He's doing a private thing. So many people want to be in the in crowd and, and want to be associated with people who are on their way. But there is a place that God wants to take you to. And you can never get there if you're with the in crowd. Is there anybody in here who's listening to me? And is there anybody in here who wants to get to the next place in God? That will require you to be detained for just a little while. Somebody say just a little while. Oh, he's not going to keep you there long. And while you're there, he's not going to break you. But God's going to reveal some things in you. There's some things that you need to know and proclaim. When Jesus' parents found him, they said, son, what are you doing? Where have you been? Jesus said, what's up, mother? Don't you know that I must be about my father's business? And I'm here to tell you today until you realize that there's business that you need to be about. The devil's going to continue to wreak havoc over your life. Why? Because there is authority that's associated with your knowledge of knowing who God has created you to be. And until you realize that you were created in his image for his purpose to produce glory in the earth, then the devil will continue to walk over you, make you feel like you're inferior, insignificant, have no worth, no value in the earth, and nobody loves me, everybody hates me, makes you have a pity party from morning to night and all through the night. The devil will continue to beat you up until you realize that God's got his hand on your life he will continue to give you a headache until you realize that what you feel inside of you is not emotion but it's power trying to come out it's not you trying to cry and have a headache and a pity party it's God trying to get your attention Lord this isn't even in my notes Jesus He's trying to get your attention. I said he's trying to get your attention. I tell you, this isn't even in my notes, but God is trying to stir the nest to get your attention. He says, get up from where you are. This isn't the place to be complacent. I have need of you. Whew. I have need of you. Don't be afraid to stay behind. I, 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 I need you, Brother Barry, come here because you'll walk faster. I need you to tell these good people that that is not in my notes. God, God has need of you. And, and what he's trying to do is to get you to come up from that place where you would rather stay hidden you would rather be locked behind and say all is well this is a new day 
This is a new place. This is a new season. And he would interrupt my sermon to say that you have value. And you have meaning, brother. Yes, you do. He loves you with an everlasting love. And he's called you to greater Salem today. You think you're here because you wanted to be here. You think you got up out of bed and it was cold and it was, you know, warm under those covers. You think you made that decision on your own? No, my brother. No, my sister. He's calling you to a higher place. That requires you to get up from where you are and recognize that God is speaking. And when he speaks, everybody should listen. Until you listen, he'll let everything rumble around you. He'll let the earth quake. He'll let the trees bend and bay. He'll let everything be disturbed until you wake up and pay attention that God is speaking. He's speaking. He's speaking. Lord Jesus he's speaking he's speaking so so where do we go from here because when God has called you to a higher place he requires you to move quickly you don't have time to take your time to try to figure out, God, what's the next step? What, okay, so how do I, okay, what's the direction? So if, if you can just tell me what road to take and how to make it happen. No, no, no. And now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now faith requires you to move when? Now faith requires you to get up from where you are and make it happen now. You may not know the details. You may not know and understand why God is asking you to do what he's asking you to do. But just do it in faith. And watch him work it out for you. Gosh. I'm trying to get back to my text. Jesus is has recognition and people acknowledge him for being the great man that he is because of his love for the people and his desire to work and, and unite or to, to connect with people of low estate, people who are downcast and people who are looked over by others. Jesus was accustomed to hanging out with the sinners and accustomed to hanging out with people that were not religious. It's a sad day in America or in the church because we desire to hang out with more Christians than we desire to reach the lost. And, and we've got to get to the place where our heart's desire becomes that that God is desiring. And that may require us hanging out with the ungodly. It may require us hanging out with people that don't look like us on Sunday morning. It may require us speaking with people who cuss like sailors, who smell like smoke, people who smell like alcohol. It may pull you out of your comfort zone, but God is calling us to a higher plane that requires us to act like Jesus did. What would he do? He did the different thing. He did the thing that was unusual. And we've got to not be afraid to do what's unusual. Lord Jesus. So, so Jesus in this chapter 15, the scribes are upset with Jesus because he's sitting with these low lives. He's sitting with these sinners, the tax collectors and the publicans. And they don't understand why he is sitting with them. So he uses a parable to describe that God has sent his son into the world to, to love all kinds of people, to love people despite or in spite of where they come from. He uses three parables in this chapter. It's called the, the, the lost chapter, if you will, because he talks about the lost sheep. He talks about the lost coin and he talks about the, uh, the prodigal son. The lost sheep, we can understand that because the sheep are, they, they walk with their heads down and they get lost um, unintentionally. 
He talked about the lost coin, which was lost accidentally. And we're going to get to that. And thirdly, he talks about the lost son who, who left away from God or walked away from God willfully. So we have people who are, have walked away because they, it's been an accident or not necessarily intentionally. People who have walked away intentionally. And then the, the lost sheep who just do it because they're just blindly or ignorantly moving, moving away from God. We have three types of people in the church. People who are just ignorant to the things of God. And instead of keep opening their eyes or lifting their head up, they just keep walking blindly until they walk their way right out of his presence. And don't feel bad about that. I'm not trying to beat anyone up. I'm just trying to bring you, uh, make you aware that this sort of situation exists. And people who are lost accidentally, we talk, we're going to talk about that. And thirdly, those who walk away intentionally. Mm, mm. To understand these parables, you have to have a kingdom mindset and be community focused and not self focused on who you are or your agenda, your for and no more. You've got to think globally, you've got to think community wise. The kingdom of God is greater than Greater Salem, the kingdom of God is greater than where you live, the kingdom of God is greater than North Carolina. Until you develop a kingdom mindset, you'll always expect God to operate in these four doors and never go beyond these doors. My brother and my sister, God is doing something greater than greater Salem. 90 people giving their lives to Christ is a drop in the bucket. When we all get together, God wants to do a greater work. And he says, greater works will you do when you believe and you get on board. Yeah, when you get on board. This passage of scripture challenges us to look beyond our systems of comfort. To observe that there is a need beyond our doors and that we, that, that, that we have the ability to help others to get what God has for them. We have the ability. Say, I have the ability. This kingdom mindset says we have what it takes to reach the lost. And Bishop spoke just last week about operating within your sphere of influence to reach someone. What blessed me about this, the beginning of the chapter, is that those sinners came to Jesus. They recognized that he had something to give them. They recognized that he wasn't too high. They knew there was something special about Jesus. And they recognized that if their lives were going to change, they had to come to where he was to hear the message. They knew that he would show up where they was, but this time, somebody say this time, they had to come where he was in order to receive what he was giving out. And I'm here to let you know today that when you walk in a place where you're walking close with God, people will seek you out and ask you about the life that you live. They'll ask you about the prayers that you pray. They'll ask you how to reach God. But you've got to get to the place where you're not afraid. Say, I'm not afraid to touch the common people or touch people that are not like you. Don't be afraid. Look at your neighbor and say, don't be afraid. It's not hard to be an effective witness. I'm not talking about being religious or super spiritual and we have some of that going on. We have people who speak in tongues from the time they get up until the time they lie down at night. They just simply make me tired. They make me dry mouth and make me want to have a drink. Of tea, that is. <laughs> Woo, y'all wine bibbers. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> I mean, no, it's not right. I'm... No, I'm teasing. <laughs> Fix it, Jesus. <laughs> Fix it, Jesus. You know how? Okay. But I'm not talking about the super religious. And Jesus had a problem with the Pharisees because they were super religious. He described them as whitewashed walls. He called them sepulchers. He called them a dead men's bones inside the sepulchers. Dead men's bone, meaning Pharisees, you have no life inside of you. Inside of you, there's nothing but death. 
And anytime you speak, Pharisee, you're speaking death. Anytime you lift your hands, you're lifting up dead bones. This was Jesus talking to the Pharisees. He says, what's inside of you doesn't have the ability to produce anything. So we have to be careful about being super spiritual. Because if your life isn't filled with the love of God, it makes you dead inside. It makes you dry like dead men's bones. And what happens to dead dry bones? They begin to evaporate. And after a while, nobody will ever know that you existed. You'll have no effect in the earth because you were dry and blown away. It's not hard to be an effective witness. What it takes is for you to be genuine. It takes for you to walk the walk and talk the talk. It takes for you to love God with all your heart. And share him, share him, share that love with others around you. It's just that simple. You don't have to wear a collar to work. Guess what, boo? They need you just to go and do your job. They don't need you to go and have your Bible all splayed out on the desk like you're on here on Sunday morning. They just need you to show up on time. Somebody say on time. Your greatest witness is to show up on time and do the work. You can't win your supervisor when you're speaking in tongues and and you got an attitude when he tells you to go clean the bathroom or he tells you to do a report or he tells you to do something that's within your job description. What's your witness? Where's your witness? You lost it. You lost it. You lost it. No, hold, hold the music, please. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. You lost it. Because you're so heavily minded that you want no earthly good. Now, come on. I'm going to help you with practical word today. Come on. You can walk this walk and talk the talk or talk this talk and walk the walk. You know, you know what I'm saying. You don't have to say one thing and live another. Because what's done in the dark is going to come to the light. You're telling people and dancing all around this church and that's wonderful because you can dance your way right to a place of victory. But your heart has got to be right. I said your heart has got to be right. Your heart has got to be right. I'll say it again. Your heart has got to be right. It's inside of the heart that will eventually come out. It will eventually come out. God, help us all when that ugly green monster shows up. Help us all. Oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to say that. I do want to say what God wants me to say. But I, wanted, I, I hope you hear me today because we've got to, we've, it's got to match up. It's got to match up. Come on, do your hands like this. It's got to match up. What you do on Sunday morning and what you, how you live Monday through Saturday, it's got to match up. We can't be super powerful on Sunday morning and be super weak Monday through, through Saturday. It's got to match up. Do I have a witness on that back row? Oh, yeah, it's got to match up. You want power or you want to show people that you have power on Sunday morning. But when, you, when it comes down to the middle of the week, you have no strength. And when people need you, we can't count on you. We can't count on you to show up and be ready to fight the devil. Let me tell you, this, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. You think you can do it within your own strength. The devil defeats you every time. He beats you over your head. He makes you cry. He gives you black eyes. And you don't know why you feel confused and and up today and down tomorrow and in and out and just moving like a big blob. Because you have no skeletal strength. You have no ability in the word of God to stand against the wiles of the devil. Are you hearing me today? Are you hearing me today? This is the day where we hear the clarion call and we grow up in him. We make the decision to grow up, no longer be tossed to and fro like children with every wind of every doctrine. You can't believe the things that God is doing because you're holding on to the past. Today is a new day. 
Lord Jesus, help me. Jesus. In our text, Jesus continues his message about focusing on the lost by giving this parable on the woman with the lost coin. This woman had something of value. He said, he said she had 10 coins, a drachma, a silver coin worth at that time a day's wage and possibly a part of her dowry from her father. And when a Jewish girl married, she began to wear a headband of 10 silver coins to signify that now she was a wife. It was the Jewish version of our modern wedding ring and would be considered a calamity for her to lose one of those coins. So she loses a coin, no fault of the coin itself, but a fault of her own. Perhaps she was carelessly cleaning the coin, shining it up, if you will. Perhaps she was uh, trying to organize it and trying to move it around. But somehow the Bible doesn't tell us or Jesus doesn't indicate how it gets lost, but it ends up getting lost she uh, no doubt mishandled the money too much you know when you're handling things too much you can cause things to, to get out of place and I hope you hear me today because Jesus spoke a parable and today we're talking about lost souls we're talking about people who have been in our midst and perhaps they're not here today because we mishandled some of them or or perhaps we tried to polish them up and try to clean them up and try to make them look good smell good good according to our standards and they just couldn't fit your mold so they began to they, they became lost they're no longer around you I said look around look around because you don't see that person who was once committed to God because somebody mishandled the loss so so however it happened the coin the the the, the believer the, the believer was lost and and because of it this woman was in a panic she had to find this coin because it was a value that the, the loss that the lost coin was a value she had nine but she needed ten and she couldn't walk around or look like she was married until she had ten coins she couldn't wear that symbol and identify herself until she was she had her tenth coin so you see the value of this coin amen do you see the value of this coin are you with me today so it was important for her to find this lost coin so that she could be, be the person that she was intended to be. So I want to give you real quickly as I hasten to my seat strategies for recovering lost things. Just real quick, just a few strategies and I'm just for re recovering lost things. The first thing is that in order to recover the lost, we need to first be ignited. Say be ignited. And we see in verse 8 that Jesus said that in order this woman, she began to light a candle. He says, either what woman having 10 pieces of silver, if she loses one piece, doth not light a candle. In order for her to find what was lost, it was important for her to see where she was going. In the Palestinian world or in that day, they didn't have windows in their house. So it was dark inside of their house. And the only way for her to see is that she needed to turn a light on. Somebody say, turn a light on. Psalm 27 says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. He is the strength of my life. And if you're going to see where you're going, you need the word of God to illuminate your way. If we're going to win the loss or reach and reach back and grab people who have seemingly slipped away out of our midst, we've got to turn the light on on our lives to find out what are we doing? How are we handling people? maybe what we do is not the right thing sometimes you've got to sit back and examine yourself through the light of the word to see if where you are is where God wants you to be begin to turn the light on in your life and say Lord turn the, your light on in me somebody say Lord turn your light on in me 
cause your light to shine through me so that others may see you and want you because of what's inside of me. Matthew 5 and 16 says, let your light so shine before men so that they may see your good works. They've got to see your good works. They've got to see the good that you do and that will draw them to him. They will, that will in turn bring them to the cross. So he says, Lord, turn your light on me so that your light may shine brightly and provide guidance for some lost soul to find their way back to you. And David said it like this, thy word, O Lord, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. Lord, Lord, turn your light on in me so that I may passionately live out my purpose. And Paul said it like this to Timothy in 2 Timothy 1 and 6, that we need to stir up the gift of God that's within us. In order for the light to shine, we've got to stir up. We've got to ignite the fire, the flames that were once there. Some of us are not passionate about winning souls for Christ because our light has become dim. We've lost our energy and our zeal for the things of God. But Paul admonished Timothy. He says if you're going to be effective in winning souls, you've got to, you've got to stir up that gift that's inside of you. The gift of God that was placed within you by the laying on of hands. He said what's inside of you is there. It just needs to be rekindled. It just needs to be stoked a little bit. You know what stoking is. It needs to be stirred up a little bit. There's some embers there but you need to kindle that flame so that once again your passion for the things of God can be rekindled. Why? Because we don't pray like we used to. We don't fast like we used to. We don't seek God like we used to. We're quick and easily bothered by things. We get upset and easily uh, um, upset by things. And so it's prayer that will begin to break that spirit. It's fasting that will begin to break our will. Somebody needs to cry and say, Lord, I need the light of your word. Oh, you didn't say it like I mean, like you mean it. Say, Lord, I need the light of your word. The second strategy is be renewed. As she cleaned the house, the Bible said she swept the house, which means she cleaned the house. She went into every nook and cranny. She opened cupboards and closets in an effort to find the lost coin. In order to win the loss, you must first and foremost be clean yourself. You can't find others and try to clean them up if your life is messed up and dirty. I'm talking to you today. I want you to pay attention. I don't want you to be distracted by your iPhone phone, your iPad, or by sending text messages. I want you to hear ye the word of the Lord. This day, God is calling you to a level of cleanliness. He's calling you to a level of holiness. He's calling you to a place of sanctification. I know this isn't a holiness church, but sanctification is right. All day it's right. It sets you apart from the world, and God is calling you to be set apart from the things of this world. Uh, the things that seem to capture your mind, uh, the things that seem to easily ensnare you. Uh, he says, I want you to go through your own cupboards. Uh, I want you to go through your own closets. Uh, I want you to take the spiritual broom of the Holy Ghost uh, and begin to sweep out everything that's not like God. Uh, you know that pornography is hiding in there. Uh, you know that alcohol is hiding in there. Uh, you know those drugs that you're addicted to uh, is hiding in there. Uh, I want you to to sweep those things out uh, so I can fill you with my spirit uh, and empower you with the power of the Holy Ghost uh, to live a godly lifestyle. Uh, is there anybody in here uh, who's hearing me today? Uh, who's hearing me say uh, God is calling you to a higher place? Uh, no more usual. Uh, no more usual stuff. Uh, God wants to bring you to a greater place of accountability. You can't save others. You can't lead others to Christ when your life is raggedy. You can't lead others to Christ when you're leading a double life. You can't lead others to Christ when you have your wife and your girlfriend on the side. You can't lead others to Christ when you're living a, a double lifestyle. Oh, come on, y'all. Stick with me. Don't you let the devil ride in you. Take 
authority over the devil and submit yourself to God. As you submit yourself to him, he will lift you up. He will exalt you. He will restore you to a place of holiness. But you've got to listen to God. And don't be afraid to put the devil in his place. Because he is a liar. He is a defeated foe. He is under our feet. Is there anybody in here that understands that the devil is under our feet? Until you understand that he's giving you power over all power of the devil. And nothing shall be able to harm you. The devil will beat you. He will beat you. God's trying to bring you up to a place where you understand your worth and your value in him. That he is giving you everything that you need that pertains to life and godly living. You're trying to find answers through a bottle. You're trying to find answers through other things. You're trying to find answers through people. You're trying to find answers through your career. But God is saying, I am your answer. I'll satisfy your soul. I'll give you what you're looking for. But you've got to put your eyes on me. Somebody just put your eyes on Jesus. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the reason that we hope. He's the reason that we have hope in this life. We've got to keep our eyes on him. He won't let us fail. He has a plan for our lives. But you'll never know it when you're looking down. When you don't believe in his word. When you don't know who you are this is the day where that changes come on clap your hands this is the day where that changes hallelujah you gotta first say Lord clean me up you gotta first say Lord do a work in me you gotta first say Lord here I am you gotta say like David did in Psalms 51 have mercy on me oh God according to thy loving kindness according to your tender mercies blot out my transgressions oh my God I wish I had some sincere people I wish I had some people who really needed God to clean their hearts some people who really needed God to wash them thoroughly David wasn't a proud man David said Lord yes 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 I'm the man and I need you to cleanse me I want to be used by you God but I'm a dirty man I want to be used by you God but I've killed an innocent man I want to be used by you oh God but I've fallen from the place of righteousness and I need you to clean me up again have mercy on me oh God have mercy on me oh God have mercy on me oh God according to thy loving kindness and according to thy tender mercies blot out my transgressions wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin create within me create within me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me restore unto me the joy of my salvation you wonder why you're not happy you wonder why you don't have joy because your soul is all messed up your spirit is tainted God is here today and he wants to cleanse your soul he wants to sanctify you every wit whole every wit complete every bit of you sanctified don't be afraid come on lift your hands come on lift your hands in the sanctuary and say Lord clean me today Lord clean me today sanctify my heart wash my mind Jesus give me a clean heart Lord renew my thoughts Jesus I want to please you in all that I say and do we've got to learn from the scriptures and allow the water of the word to wash us and renew us to sanctify and cleanse us are you hearing me today this is your day this is your moment in time when God is calling you higher He's calling you higher. Come on, clap your hands uh, and give him glory. I said clap your hands and give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God. And lastly, we are to be empowered by faith to do the work that God has given us. To seek him diligently. 
And the last cause, he said, of verse 8, talks about she began to sweep the house and seek diligently until she found what she was looking for. And that emphasizes the thoroughness of her search. She didn't go through the house with a little duster just to move the dust around from one place to place. She got in there. She grabbed that pledge. She grabbed that hot water and that soap cleanser and she wiped stuff down. She didn't clean, hadn't cleaned in years or months. She moved things around just to be able to find that lost coin. What are you saying today, Elder Porter? I'm saying that at this place in our spiritual lives, God is saying if you're going to find the lost, you've got to make sure your house is clean. You've got to put emphasis. You've got to be thorough with your cleanliness. Don't you just hate it when you go to somebody's house or a situation when you know people haven't cleaned. But oh, oh Lord Jesus, God help me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to say that. I don't want to say that. But have you ever followed your niece or your nephew? Let's do it that way. And you know they haven't really cleaned that bathroom. You go in there and there's dirt everywhere. The bathroom still needs to be washed. The room, the carpet needs to be cleaned. And you know they haven't cleaned. So they've done what's called surface cleaning. But Jesus is saying today, no more surface cleaning. In order to ascend to the height, you've got to be able, you've got to thoroughly clean your heart. Thoroughly allow the Lord to search you. Search you and find those things that are not like him. Don't be afraid to expose yourself. Don't be afraid to allow God to cleanse you every bit whole. He's here to do that today. He's here to do that today. She coupled her faith with works. She realized that if she looked and she began to search, she didn't just, just say, I want to find this thing. She put her faith to work. And I'm saying to you today, you've got to put your faith to work because faith without works is what? Dead. Hebrews 11 and 6 says that without faith it's impossible to please God for anyone that comes to him must first believe that he is God and that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him and if you're going to receive what you need from God you've got to begin to seek him in faith you've got to begin to trust him with your whole heart that God can clean your life up and change you and turn you around so that you can be effective in the marketplace you can be effective even in your own home he wants to make you effective in the places that God has called you to be but first you must be clean is there anybody listening to me today he wants to empower you by your faith to do the work that he's called you to do he wants you to be renewed by the spirit of your mind and God wants you to be ignited he wants your passion for him to be rekindled until you have those elements at work in your life you'll continue to be ineffective you'll continue to be less um, um, effective in the things of God he is here to make your life effective come on clap your hands and give God some glory come on clap those hands like you mean it and give God some glory come on stand to your feet my time is up hallelujah Hallelujah.